I will gladly say unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It is so good to be here today. It is so good to be here today. And we know we're not here because we've been so good or deserving. But we know we're here because God is good. God is merciful. He's gracious. And I thank God for his favor today. And so why don't we just give the Lord another hand of praise for being so good to us. Amen, amen. There are so many who wanted to be here but couldn't be here, but we're here. Amen. And so we give God all the praise and all the glory. And Lord, we just thank you and we praise you for the testimony of the saints. We thank you and we praise you, O oh God, for blessing us to be here one more time. And so, Lord, as we continue in service, we dedicate this service to you. Yeah. Have your way. Let your will be done. Lord, move as you uh, command. Move as you wish to move, oh God. Somebody came in here needing a healing. We know you are a healer. Yes. Somebody needs to be touched. Yes. We know you can touch. Yes. Somebody here needs to be delivered. Yes. You are a God of deliverance. Yes. And so why we just yield to you right now? Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And Lord, we'll continue yes. to give you all the praise. All the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God. We give God praise today because He is so good. And at this time, we're going to put you in the hands of our very capable minister of music, Dr. Praise, Brother Dion Davis. Amen. Brother Trevor, as He bless us through the gifts of music and song. Praise the Lord, everybody. We just got the hands of celebrating Jesus in there. We truly serve an awesome God, amen. Yeah.
Amen. 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 Uh, for a few moments, I want to share from the subject abundantly blessed. All right. Amen. Abundantly blessed. I receive. Abundantly mm -hmm. blessed. Yes, I receive that, Lord. Verse 25 says, Say now I beseech thee, O Lord. Yes. O Lord, I beseech thee. Yes. Send now prosperity. Mm -hmm. Abundantly blessed. Mm -hmm. Prosperity, my brothers and sisters, is a very popular word that we hear thrown out so um, loosely and so casually. Um, the moment we hear it, we begin to think about wealth. We think about affluence. We think about opulence and success. We be real who among us would not refer a fortune in riches to a struggling day-to-day -day existence. Mm. According to a recent study, the top 100 percent, I'm sorry, the top 1 percent of income earners, which includes most of the highest ranking corporate executives, they reap almost all of the income gained. Same time, good jobs keep disappearing. And new employment opportunities uh, tend to be uh, insecure and underpaid. The statistics may show that we had the lowest employment rate in our economic history. But it also shows that we have the lowest average income as well. And so the question becomes, wouldn't it be wonderful to have an abundance? that we can count on for the rest of our lives? Wouldn't it be just great if we had a, 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 a resource that we could just tap into, a, a well that never runs dry? Imagine having no, sort of, no shortage of anything. Imagine having no shortage of clothes or food. No shortage of gas for your car or any other very essential that we need to survive. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we didn't have to worry about living on a shoestring budget, if you will? Uh, wouldn't it be nice if we didn't have to rob Peter to pay Paul? Somebody knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. Well, the Bible says there's only one way to guarantee our survival in this life. But Psalm 118 and 8 says it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. And that is it. Stop trusting in your job. Yeah. Jobs are flaky. Stop trusting in your bank account because they're flaky. Yeah. They're feeble. You need to know that you got to put all your faith and trust in God. The Bible says the cattle on a thousand hill belongs to Him. The earth is the Lord's and the food is thereof. Everything you need is in His hand. Yes. And so I come out here this morning to let the church know that there's something very special about this passage of scripture because it is literally in the center of God's word. It says here in Psalm 118 and 8, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Now that, my brothers and sisters, is at the center of God's will for our life. We got to learn how to trust him and do not doubt. How do you know when you trust God, he's able? When you trust God, he will. We just got to trust the outcome. Yes. And so the psalmist says in verse 25, um, he begs for God to intervene and shower him with the kind of prosperity that can only come from the Lord himself. He says, I beseech you, O Lord, send now a prosperity. Yes. And so the question becomes, is he begging for wealth? Is he begging for affluence? Is he begging for opulence? Is he begging for success? And the answer is yes, but not the kind of opulence, not the kind of affluence, not the kind of prosperity that we think of. That's right. You see, he's begging for God to intervene in his pitiful state and shower him with not with currency and cash, but with mercy, love, and grace. And I want you to know that if you want to be at the center of God's will, that's where your prayer request needs to hang its head on. Right. If you really want right. to be in the will of God, right. you want to stop asking for things. Yes. And you need to start asking him for some grace. Yes. You need to stop asking him for things. Yes. Things that will pass away, but ask him for mercy yes. and for favor. Yes. That's good preaching. Oh, yes, if you want 
going to be at the center of God's will. Uh -huh. We need to know that there are three things that will help us along the way. And I don't know about you, but I want my fair share of the abundance of God. And so the first thing we need to consider um, that when we talk about having an abundance of God, I thank God for his mercy. How do you know the Lord showers us with an abundance yes, of mercy? Somebody ought to thank God for his mercy yes, this morning. Yes. Oh yes, God's mercy is demonstrated in the goodness and compassion that he shows not just to the saints, but to what he shows to the sinner as well. Mercy is, at the, is an internal part of God's makeup. But he doesn't have to use his mercy. Why? Because God doesn't owe us anything. He certainly is not obligated to us in any way. What I mean is God could punish us for all of our sin. But he chooses instead to offer mercy toward us. And his mercy is an act of compassion that because we are so undeserving. And let me just pull over to the side of the road long enough to remind you that if God gave us what we deserve, yeah. we would all be condemned right now. The Bible says for all that sin yeah. and all is short of the glory of God. Paul says that all of us have sinned. And let me tell you, all includes everybody. It leaves out no one. None of us is Reproach. That's why you can't look down on anybody. You can't hold your nose up against anybody. I want you to listen. I know you think that you're perfect and you haven't offended anybody. You some of y'all think y'all haven't offended God. But can I tell you, nothing is farthest from the truth. The Bible says we've all sinned. We've all sinned against our neighbor. We've all sinned against our family. We even sinned against ourselves because we refuse to accept. For our soul. But I bring you some good news this morning from heaven. How do you know God is merciful? Yes. Oh, yes, yes, He's merciful. And He responds to our sinful nature with His very act of mercy. Oh, yes, mercy is God's gift when we refuse to say that we're sorry. Thank God for His mercy. Yes. Mercy is God's gift when we refuse to obey His word. Thank God for His mercy. When we refuse to walk in the light because he is the light, uh, thank God for his mercy. Uh, mercy is God's gift uh, when Christ was crucified out on the cross for our sin. I don't know about you, but I thank God uh, for his mercy. Yes. And not only that, but God's mercy. Amen. He shows mercy every day. Uh, he sure, let me tell you, I don't know about you, but I don't need his mercy just one time. I don't need his mercy just once in a while, but I need his mercy every day. Yes. And how do you know the Lord is merciful to us every day, throughout the day? He's merciful. He's merciful every day for our flimsy excuses and our vulgar language. The Lord is merciful. God shows mercy every day for our gossip and our lies and our indifference and our coldness. You know, uh, we're supposed to be Christian, but we can be so cold sometimes. We can be so rigid sometimes. But thank God for his mercy. God shows mercy every day for our fault finding and our nitpicking and our covering others. I'm so glad about his mercy today. God shows mercy every day for our hypocrisy and our phoniness and our bitterness. Let me just tell you, if you are a true show not Christian, you ought to show some sign. If you are show not saved, you ought to look like your father. Yes. Nobody has to wonder who you belong yes. to. Nobody has to wonder, do you, are you a part of the church? Yes. Are you a part of the kingdom of God? You ought to look like it. But because we don't thank God for his mercy. Yes. Oh, yes, he shows mercy for our resentment and our anger and annoyance and even for our greed and gluttony. That's why David says in Psalm 86 and 5, he says, For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. And so if you need God's abundant mercy, you ought to let him know and it will be yours. If there is Listening, uh, is there anybody here uh, that's thankful for God's uh, abundance of mercy uh, that every time 
use your mercy. We can know that you blew it. God's mercy. Oh, yes, and he shows mercy and he don't just give us a second chance, but he gives us another chance and another chance. And you know that God is merciful in your life. I tell you to throw your hand back and throw your hand up and say, thank you for your mercy. Oh, yes, mercy. Boys. 
for what is powerful grace. Uh, there's something about the yes, grace of God. Uh, yes. Oh, yes, God's grace. Amen. His grace is, is unleashed when we receive Jesus as our Savior. Yes. That's why we sing the song, Your Grace uh, and Mercy has brought me through. Uh, I'm living this moment because of you. I want to thank you uh, and praise you too. Uh, is there anybody faithful about His grace? Uh, Is there anybody here who knows we're not here because we've been so good? We're not here because we've been all of that. But it's only by God's goodness and his grace and his favor and his mercy. I thank God for his grace today. Yes, thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, yes. And so we know about the abundance of God's mercy. We know about the abundance of of God's grace. Yeah. And then lastly, I'm glad that I have God's love. Yes. Is anybody thankful for the love? Yes. Oh yes, love. Love is at the core of God's very nature. Mm -hmm. He created us out of love. Mm -hmm. His love for us is essential to our relationship with him. Mm -hmm. Jesus taught that all the law and the prophets hang on this one thing, and that's God's love. That's Matthew 22 and 4. God's love is fulfillment of his law because his love impels him to carry out the demands of the law. Let me see if I can break it down a little clearer. God is love, okay? But God is also just. God's law demands justice, for God is only good. God's mercy and grace found a way to carry out his law of justice, and it was found with love. And by offering his supreme expression of self-sacrifice on Calvary, how many of you know love found a way? And so for that, we ought to say thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, did you know there is no love without God? Mm, Let me say that again. I said there is no love at all without God. All love, whether it's expressed toward God or to our fellow man, it all starts with God's love. That's why 1 John 4 and 21 says, he who loves God loves his brother also. You can't love nobody if you don't love God. Our love for each other is a byproduct of God's love toward us. You can't love God and hate your brother or sister. I didn't say it. The word of God says it. 1 John 4 and 20 says, if a man says he loves God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he that loves not his brother, who he sees every day, how can he love God who he has not seen? And so let me just pull over and tell you, time out for holiness. Time out for being fake. If you don't love God, you can't love me. And if you don't love me, you definitely don't love and we can be real right now. Uh, we do know that we can be hard to love sometimes. That's right. But only when we try to love in carnality. Amen. That kind of love is insecure. Yep. It has limits. Mm -hmm. It's full of posturing. In other words, you got to put forth an effort. I love you if you love me. But no, the <laughs> word of God don't say it like that. No. You got to love. You got to love God. And so God's abundant love is limitless. Uh -huh. It has no boundaries. It has no restrictions. See, we only want to put up with people uh, as long as they'll put up with you. Uh, but we can't be like that because God didn't put up with us uh, as long as we put up with him. In other words, there's his grace and there's his mercy again because we don't always walk with the Lord uh, like we ought to. But thank God he still loves us. And so if grace and mercy yes. are the virtues of God, his love is the glue that holds it all together. God's love is abundant. How many of you know he loves us? Yes. And if we say that we love God, then our love must be an overflow of his abundance. Our love has to be without hypocrisy and dissimulation. Romans 12 and 10 says, Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love in honor, preferring one another. And so, yes, we are images of our Creator, and we should care.
carry in abundance all three of these cardinal virtues in our own hearts. We too must be merciful. We too must be gracious. Yes. And we too must be loving. Yes. And so as I get ready to close, the Bible tells us in Romans 5 and 8 that God commended his love toward us. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And we witnessed that a few weeks ago when we celebrated Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday. We were reminded about God's love, how Jesus rolled into Jerusalem on the day of Passover. He was doing it. Uh, the only thing that he could do, he was expressing his love toward mankind. Jesus knew that Calvary, uh, listen, he knew what was Adam and Eve were told about it uh, when they were cast out of the Garden of Eden. Uh, Abraham saw it uh, when he was out on Mount Moriah. Uh, Moses saw it illustrated uh, by the serpent on the pole. Uh, the Old Testament priests uh, foreshadowed it in their daily sacrifices. Uh, David wrote about this love uh, in Psalm 22. Uh, Isaiah prophesied about it. Uh, years in Isaiah 53 and Jesus had already revealed its necessity in his teaching when he said for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life and so Jesus he came to give love he came to he was ready to answer David's prayer yes. when David said, Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord, O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. Yes. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Yes. We have blessed you out of, of the house of the Lord. Yes. And so I came down here today to talk about God's grace. Yes. I came to talk about his love. Christ did what the blood of lambs and goats couldn't do. He did what the Old Testament law couldn't do. He did what good works and kind deeds can't do. He did what Abraham couldn't do. He did what Moses couldn't do. He did what Joshua couldn't do. He did what the judges couldn't do. He did
ministered in the church. Uh -huh. But I also sang in the youth choir. And I, I don't even remember the full lyrics of the song, but there was a song we used to sing in the choir that said, I may not have everything, yeah. but still I am abundantly blessed. Yes. And so, so I don't have, I, I, look, listen, I wish I had a pocket full of money, but money can't do for me what God's grace and mercy can do. I wish I owned property all over the place, but property can't do what God's love could do. Let me tell you, we got to stop being so focused on things and become more focused on Him. And when you realize what you have in Him, you will also realize that nothing else matters. I wouldn't trade God's mercy. I wouldn't trade God's favor. I wouldn't trade God's grace. And I definitely wouldn't trade his love for nothing this earth can give me. Because my God is good. My God is good. You may be good to me, but God is good. And let me tell you something. Dean Daniels got this word that I love to hear him say. Can't nobody say it like him. God is gooder than gooder than gooder than good. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, he's right. Show sure up. Psalm 18. 118. Mm -hmm. This is the day which the Lord has made. Yes. We will rejoice and be glad yes. and save now I beseech thee, O Lord. Yes. For more I beseech thee. Yes. Sing now. Send it. Prosperity. Send it, Lord. Thank you, O oh God, for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. And thank you for your love. And somebody's watching, somebody's here, and you don't realize how rich you are. You don't realize how abundantly blessed you are. But I'm going to tell you something. In Jesus, you have everything you need. In Him, you have everything that you need. Everything you think you need. You have it in Him. And guess what? If the Lord don't give it to you, you don't need it. Let me say that again. If the Lord doesn't give it to you, you don't need it. And so wherever you are, wherever you are, you know that you need a Savior. And the Lord demonstrated His mercy. He demonstrated His grace. And he demonstrated his love by what happened out on Calvary. Because we were all sinners. We all sinned and fallen short of the grace of God. But God commended his love toward us. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And he didn't stay dead because he, he resurrected himself. He got up with all power in this hand. And with that power, that's power enough to make it. We can make it, but you need the Savior. So if you haven't accepted Christ in the free part of this day, we extend this invitation to you. You need to come. If you're watching um, the broadcast and you haven't accepted Christ as your personal Savior, you can type in the comment section, I want to be saved. And somebody here will reach out to you and will give you the plan of salvation. Will train you in discipleship. But nevertheless, if you can hear me, you can repeat this prayer after me. You can receive Jesus and be saved. Lord, I am a sinner. But I believe you died on the cross for my sin. I believe God raised you from the dead on the third day. I believe all power in heaven and in earth is in your hand. Come into my heart, Lord. Fill me with your spirit. And I'll live the rest of my days for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that prayer and you're here, I'm here, our teachers are here. If you pray that prayer, you watch the broadcast, again, just type your name. We will reach out to you. And you can come and help us to continue to build God's kingdom one soul at a time. We'd love to have you here at United 9312 Union Avenue. Come and learn of the Lord and 
his will for your life. We're getting ready to leave. Amen. Uh, getting ready to leave. As always, we uh, want to remind you that on Tuesday night, we're in prayer every Tuesday night. At 7 o'clock, we're on the prayer line. Amen. Amen. Praying and interceding on behalf of the members of the church, members of our family, and our community. Because God still answers prayer. Sure enough. Amen. It's Sunday morning, our first lady is blessing us with uh, Bible study. Bible study with Lady Dixie. We thank God for her and her efforts for a phenomenal job. Next Sunday, somebody say next Sunday. Next Sunday is Mother's Day. Amen. Somebody always somebody just say amen to celebrate. Listen, next Sunday is Mother's Day, and we want you to bring your mother or bring your wife, bring that special woman in your life. We want to come out and celebrate her on next Sunday. Amen. With a powerful word from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Also, uh, Miss Little Miss Lady My Dix. Amen. She Listen, um, has got two solos. Two solos given at her school. Woo! And this morning I asked her, she said, yes, you can tell her. And so if you all invited to come and hear Imani sing two solos. Yes. This is coming Thursday, amen, at 7 o'clock. And um, I hope y'all be able to hear her over the screens from from <laughs> Amen. Um, but if you're able to, you, you're more than invited. Um, want to continue to keep in prayer. Uh, amen. Take our musician in prayer. Our minister of music uh, on behalf of his father, uh, Minister Tommy Davis. Keep him lifted up in prayer. Amen. Continue to pray for Sister Janice Fowler, uh, Sister Gooch Mom. Uh, we thank you. So glad to see Sister Barbara Watkins in the house today. Continue to pray for her. And we're praying for Sister Francis Jones and all those on our prayer list. Good to see Brother Pulley out today. Amen. We, it's just good to see the Lord moving in the lives of the saints. Amen. 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 All hearts and minds are clear. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for what our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard. We thank you for your written word and your preached word. Help us, O oh God, to apply the word to our lives that we might be drawn closer to you. And now as we leave this place to endeavor your presence, may the love of God, the grace of Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest room and abide with all of us now and forevermore. Let every heart say amen. 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 As you go, tell the world. Tell the world about Jesus. Tell them about his love. As you go, tell the world. <laughs>